The art I make mostly follows a theme of travel, nature and little adventures. Quite often I draw and paint backpackers, trees, animals and places I had visited before. But it hasn't always been like that. There was a period when making art felt just pointless to me. I felt like I had nothing to say and didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Why was I gonna make art anyways? This is the story of a trip that would change everything. This is my friend Paul. We met a window ago as backpackers in Alberta, Canada. With us as well was Bucke, who owned this cool looking van. From Calgary we traveled west on the hunt for a job in the mountains. Eventually we would all end up in Sun Peak Ski Resort in British Columbia. We all got jobs there and basically had the time of our life. Now, a year later, we were planning something bigger. We found out some Brian, not it? Some Brian found it. Some Brian and Sean and so on a camper box on. Because in a kleine Wohnwagen box, die man auf einem Pickup hinten drauf schnallt. So sieht's aus. Erster Eindruck? Das ist das wunderschöne Ding. Der, der Truck schaut schon richtig abgefuckt aus, aber ich glaube, die camper box, damit kann man arbeiten. Brian was real nice. His camper, not so much. So here's what we bought instead. This is a 1990 Winnebago motor home. We would bring Nicole and Sarah with us, so the RV definitely needed some work to suit the four of us. Wer hätte das geglaubt, ha? dass wir mit 23, schräg, schräg 26, 96, ähm, äh, Besitzer eines Wohnmobils sind. Und jetzt wollen wir hier noch ein bisschen Arbeit reinstecken, das Ding renovieren. Wir müssen jetzt noch eineinhalb Monate im Skigebiet knechten. Und dann würde ich sagen, geht's los. Time to get some renovations done. Most importantly, we had to build a double bunk bed. We definitely needed to separate the bathroom. And finally, the whole interior was screaming for a fresh coat of paint. Is that it? Hopefully. We had the RV parked up at Paul's driveway and we would work every free minute on it. We needed to be done when the season was over, and we had a lot to do. We got to work with the tools we had available, committed to build something we would be proud of. Even though there was still snow for days, spring was approaching rapidly and we were getting ready to hit the road. Okay, so here's the plan. While the trip was supposed to be a spontaneous thing, we at least had a vague idea of where we wanted to go. We were located in Sun Peaks, BC, a few hours from the US border. The plan was to go down to the States and, for the most part, follow the Highway 101 along the coast. We would then turn inland and make our way back up to Canada. And so it begins. After a short visit in Clearwater, BC, we were headed southbound. First stop, Seattle, Washington. 
After a day of sightseeing in the city, there was something else we wanted to check out. It required some thorough research and some driving deep into the Washington woods. We're driving to the Vents Creek Bridge, the second highest railway bridge in uh, America. We'll see. We have to find the spot where we're gonna start. That looks like a parking lot here. I don't know. An unnecessarily complicated detour later, and we finally found the bridge. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you here. We tried getting on, but with the first 50 meters of beams removed, it was quite frankly very terrifying. With some shaky legs, we continued our journey south. Next stop, Portland, Oregon. We parked up the RV and went on to explore downtown. Portland has some really cool little shops and plenty of craft beer breweries to check out. <laughs> and just out of town you will find the Multnomah Falls. It is the tallest waterfall in Oregon. Now, the next spot has been serving as an inspiration quite a few times already. You might have seen me paint it on my garden wall in spring. This is Cannon Beach on the Oregon coast. They've got this massive rock formation sitting there right on the shore. It's called Haystack Rock and the Needles and I think it looks pretty amazing. I'm also digging those coastal beach town vibes a lot. And the next stretch of the trip is all about that. The Oregon coast is one scenic location after another. We even got to camp at a few of them. Also, I had my premiere here, crashing my drone. I'm still running. Looking back at the footage now, I feel somewhat regretful for not bringing a sketchbook and draw some of this beautiful scenery. Capturing moments that way has something very unique to it. It is also quite meditative to just sit down in nature and draw what you see. After days of scenic coastal views, we had made it to San Francisco. We're in San Francisco. And from here we would leave the coast behind us for a couple of days to drive inland. We had waiting for us Yosemite National Park. Spending a lot of time behind the wheel. Some days we would drive until it was pitch black out. We would then camp on the side of the road, only to see in the morning where we actually were. Where Malibu, close to Los Angeles. Oh. This is where we camped last night.
It was a long, long winter in the BC mountains. The LA sun was surely appreciated. LA traffic, on the other hand, not that enjoyable. By now we had seen some of America's most iconic places and the old RV had put up with a lot. It had been very reliable throughout the trip. Until now, it just kept shutting down in random situations and it became seriously worrying for us. I don't really have any way to test it. That one's sealed. I can test the voltage going to it to make sure it's charging, but I can't test the battery. The closest shop wasn't able to help us, unfortunately. So we decided to crack on for now. But we did not have a good feeling about it. To be honest, it was only a matter of time. And then the inevitable happened. The RV was running smooth again. All it took was replacing its old rusty batteries. And all I needed? was a change of scenery and a little adventure to feel fully inspired to create more again. This trip is a symbol for the things I value in life. And I find myself integrating these values into my art more and more, which makes it even more valuable to me and hopefully to you, the viewer, as well. See, art is self-expression. It is all about sharing ideas and feelings and perspectives. So I say, find something you care about so much, something you're constantly thinking about, and you will never run out of inspiration again.